Well, hey friends, welcome back to the homestead. I'm out in the garage this evening and doing a little bit of tinkering, a little bit of work on the tractor, and I thought I might as well take you guys along with me. Our tractor that we have is a Kubota L2501. It's a 25 horse tractor with an LA525 front end loader on it. And one of the options that I chose to purchase when I bought this tractor was a level indicator kit for the front bucket. So if you're an inexperienced operator like I am, um, I still consider myself inexperienced. One of the things that I struggle with and many other people probably struggle with is when you're coming up to a load with your, with your loader to pick up something, you can't really see the front of your bucket. So you can't tell if your bucket is flat, if it's curled up, or if it's pitched down. So you can come up to load some material and you can't really tell where that bucket is. I'm sure after years of experience or more experience than I have, you kind of get the hang of it and you kind of learn by judging by sight of seeing different things, where things are at. I, I can't figure it out yet. So I did purchase a level indicator kit for our front end loader. I think it was like a $60 add on or something. They were out of stock when we bought it. So a couple days later, the guy stopped by my house and he dropped it off and I haven't installed it yet. So today that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see if I can tackle this project. I've opened the box, I've looked at the instructions. It doesn't seem too hard, but it's something that I haven't done before. So I'm gonna take you guys along and we'll learn together and figure out how to put this thing on. So instruction wise, it does come with an instruction manual. It's about three pages long. Excuse my mess on my workbench. Um, this steel rod here, this rod that's painted, two new pins that go into the right hand side of the front end loader, a nut, a bolt, and a little cutter pin. I felt it was a little too risky with my nice shirt on messing with grease. No matter how careful I am, I'm sure I was gonna ruin something. So this pin right here, and this is the right hand side of the tractor, this pin has to come out and this pin has to come out, which is going to leave this assembly free. So I'm gonna start with just the bottom one first. I think it'll be a little bit easier than trying to, to hold things together and pull this. Uh, there's just a bolt on the inside here that holds this together. So to clarify, it's not that this bolt holds everything together. This bolt is basically just a lock bolt a little nylock washer on the end and it keeps this pin from ever being able to slide out in either direction. So this pin here you can see it does have a grease zerk on one side. The other side has a little nub that sticks out and that's ultimately where that picotter pin is going to go. This hole here is where this bolt's going to go back into this new pin to hold it in place. Hopefully the new one goes in just as easy. Ah. All right, that's what the old pin looks like. The only real difference, is this extra extension at the end and that little nub where the level indicator is gonna hook on. So when that other, the old pin came out, this entire lower assembly kind of shifted. And <clears throat> I've tried using a pry bar to try to, move some things around to try to get it back into place so that this would line up to fit in and I'm not having much luck so I think what I need to do is I'm going to turn on the tractor and I'm going to use the controls to bring this piston back a little bit so until I can get this to line up and try to get it at least halfway through actually I'll probably try to push it all the way through so it's where it needs to be um, because I don't really have any other way to move it I've tried pushing down lifting up Maybe I should have done this with the bucket off because I do have a quick attach, so that might be a lesson.
So moving the, uh, disconnecting my quick attach system and using the hydraulics from the <clears throat> front loader, I was able to reposition things to get it lined up. What I have to do now is get this hole lined up with this hole so that that keeper bolt can go in there. Okay, I would have ruined my shirt. Oh, come on. These gloves, when you're working on greasy stuff, are a savior, but even these little grippy ones can be slippery sometimes. All right, there we go. Now do keep in mind that this shaft that you put in there was brand new as bare steel. And when you get done with this project, don't forget to hit those grease jerks and, zoop, and grease this up. Well, we definitely learned some things on the first one. So this one I'm hoping goes a little smoother. These bolts, just for reference, so you know, 10 millimeter. All right, so the top one does not have zerk fittings to keep this lubed, it, it, it greases from the top here. So right, if you're following along, this is the top pin. Um, instruction wise, it's different depending on which loader you have, whether it goes in this up position or in the down position. On the 525, LA525 front end loader that I have, it goes in the up position. So this, you see this flat plate is on the top. It should have stayed pretty well aligned, yep. Nice, nice. And so, yep, okay, here's something going on here. We have two different holes here. They can put this in this position. There we go in a position like this or about like this, depending on which hole we use. So you need to go back to the instructions and figure out for this model, for an unloader, which position does it go in. All right, so hopefully this is a better view for you guys. Depending, you make sure you read these instructions. So I have the LA525 front end loader. This fits on four or three other front end loaders and each one has a different position where this pin goes. For my particular model, 525, it goes in this position right here. We'll drop our keeper bolt in and we'll get this tightened up. So remember that little cotter pin? This little nub on the inside of that pin that we put in, this rod here is going to slide over that nub. And then we need to put this little pin through there to hold it in place so it doesn't fall off. Because without this pin, there's literally nothing holding it there. So there we go. All right, we're getting close here. So the instructions clearly warn you this rod here we attach down at the bottom with that little cotter pin. Do not try to run it inside these hoses. Keep it. Keep it to the sides of these hoses so that things don't get damaged. That bolt that came with it should thread right into here. This one, if you're taking notes, this one switched sizes on us. This is a 12 millimeter, where prior to this, everything we've been dealing with was 10. Keeping us on our toes. All right, we're getting close here. So the instructions clearly warn you this rod here we attach down at the bottom with that little cotter pin. Do not try to run it inside these hoses. Keep it, keep it to the sides of these hoses so that things don't get damaged. That bolt that came with it should thread right into here. This one, if you're taking notes, this one switched sizes on us. This is a 12 millimeter where prior to this everything we've been dealing with was 10. Keeping us on our toes. All right, so I think the last step, so this rod indicator will slide through this, go down into here, and then it locks in place with this bolt here. And from what I've gathered, we're gonna have to fire this tractor up and give it a try. When you're in 
this position in this corner position, that's where your level is. If you go this direction or this direction, you know you're not level. When you get it rested right there in the center, and what you can do is if you have different attachments, whether you have a front end loader or uh, pallet forks, for example, things might sit a little differently. You can loosen this bolt, put it on a level surface, get it level how you want it. You can loosen this bolt, adjust this rod a little bit so that you're where you need to be, and then tighten this bolt back down. So I know for sure that my the front end of my loader is not level right now. I disconnected my bucket from my quick attach and I lowered it way down so that I could get things lined up to get that pin in. So I'm gonna fire the tractor back up. I'm going to attach the front of my loader back onto my bucket. We'll lock in the quick attach arms so that it doesn't come off. We'll try to get the bucket as level as I can get it set down on the ground and then we'll adjust this rod to the right position and we'll know we're good to go going forward. Now that we know that our bucket's level, our rod indicator is not telling us that things are level. Remember I tightened this down when things weren't right. So this is the time to make things right, it's raining outside. You can loosen this bolt a little bit. Slide this indicator down. Get it right in the center of that curve. And that's gonna put you pretty darn close to level every time. So I'm gonna fire the tractor up one more time. I'm gonna lift the bucket a little bit and I'm gonna move the bucket pitch I mean, so you guys can see what this little level indicator does. So a pretty handy little kit. I don't know if it's totally worth $60, the Kubota asking prices for this part. Um, I bought mine from a dealer. Maybe eBay or someplace might have them cheaper, I'm not really sure. So this particular model that I installed, so again, my tractor is an L2501. My front end loader is an LA525. The part number here is L2130, level indicator kit and it fits on the LA46 series, the LA5 series, LA703 series. Pretty handy little thing. I'm gonna enjoy having it. It should help me um, learn better where I'm at from a, from a bucket perspective. Um, really easy to adjust if you need to. If you find out it's not quite right, I wish my level was a little bit non-level, you know? Easy to adjust. Hey, wait, don't leave yet. I messed something up. This bolt, remember how I told you you might want to put some uh, Loctite on that? It was an extra piece I found. This little nut goes on this bolt to act as a jam nut to lock that in place to keep it from coming loose on itself. So I'm going to pull this bolt out. You thread this nut on there. Tighten this back down and then back tighten this nut to hold it and it'll keep that from coming loose. So I think in all I spent, well, if I wasn't filming this whole process and explaining it as I went, I could probably do the whole thing in 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. It's really not that bad of an install. Um, I don't know if you'd wanna, I think the instructions talk about removing both pins. I don't know if you wanna do them both at the same time because then this cylinder is completely free and you're gonna have to try to balance it. Although it may help getting that bottom one in a little smoother. So not a bad project, pretty quick, pretty easy. Don't forget to grease your two pins up when you're done because they're, they're bare metal right now with whatever leftover grease is in there. Thanks for joining, hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna, rains are nice tonight. I'm gonna go find the wife and see what she's up to and you guys have a good night.